Good morning, folks. Bay State Yankee here. Uh, we're back with episode number two of getting ready for fall, getting all of our projects done before winter gets here. Uh, there's a number of small things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to be uh, saving some dill seeds that we harvested from the garden the other day. Um, and how, show you how we do that and what we do with them. Uh, but we'll, more about that later. We're going to be uh, setting the ash can out in the garden for the wood ashes from the stove, like we talked about yesterday. Um, we're going to be discussing recycling motor oil. I've got uh, six quarts ready to go, uh, what we do with it, and uh, keep it out of the environment. And then we're going to be getting ready uh, to bring in the wood from the woodshed into our indoors wood bin. Uh, that currently is housing the snowblower that has to be pulled out, set up, and then uh, next week we can change the oil and go through that, make sure that's running fine. But we'll get the wood bin ready today. Uh, bringing in the wood takes, I usually take numerous days to do it. Uh, we have, there's no need to do it all in one day and kill yourself. So I get the bin ready and then as the weather permits, I bring some in back and forth, back and forth. Um, it's numerous trips, so you know, it's boring to watch, but we'll show you a little clip on it, but I won't, I won't go through all the details on it. Uh, in any event, uh, so let's get started with the dill seed. Um, I've got everything set up here, so uh, let me just get things going. Several days ago, we harvested the dill seed. You can see here how we've uh, dug up the plants. First we cut the heads off, put them in bags, and then we dug up the plants. And all of that will be fed into the compost. Um, we grow in in raised beds. It gives me a good uh, a good root base, and um, they, they do really well. I can get a four to five foot high dill plant out of that. So I gather my, uh, my dill in bags. And as you can see, this stuff is definitely dry. They're already falling off the, off the vine here. Um, in fact, I've got a lot already right in there. Uh, <coughs> that right there is probably what you would get if you purchased uh, four or five bags of seed at the store. And roughly a buck fifty a bag. Um, there's like five six dollars there, right there. We don't need all this dill. That's that being said, uh, I save it because a lot of years it doesn't uh, self seed, and you end up with no dill. So each year I watch patiently for the stuff to start coming up. But if it doesn't come up, I throw in a handful of this stuff. Now maybe not all of the seed is viable, but in that, you know, it won't all start. Sometimes you get bad seed, you know, but uh, if you put a handful in there, you know you're going to get some dill. So I go through and I take the head and I just pull it up like this and then I pull off the seeds and I get what I can get. I don't get everything, but it's okay. <clears throat> so it's a long process. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut the camera off and I'm going to do up a bunch of it. And you can kind of see what's going on here. But, um, when I come back, we'll talk about um, the need to make sure that uh, this is not hybrid seed and you know why why that's important uh, this particular seed is not hybrid seed uh, i know that because the dills that self seed keep coming back you know really nice and strong it's a good healthy stock although i'm not sure what the what the uh, strain is um, 
At this point, it doesn't really matter. So. Okay. Okay, I've got the uh, the seeds sifted through. You can see the uh, this is all the debris. This will go back to the compost. Uh, this is what I got for seeds. I got some sticks in there, so I'll just kind of do this and uh, pick out the pick out the biggest amount of sticks. And that's what I have for seed. There's a lot of seed. Far more than what we'll ever need. But I know that uh, if I have two bad years, three bad years of, uh, of growing dill where it won't sprout on its own, I've got enough seed to back me up. So I'll share some with the neighbors. Uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I know they, they do pickling and they have you know, dill growing. Um, and as you can see, I got a lot here. This is all waste. Um, we'll just get that on the floor and sweep it up. So that's what we do. Now I'll put this in a plastic bag, uh, get the air out of it, and put a date on it and save it. In fact, I think I have a little bag from last year too. Um, but this year was a good year. So it's a lot of seed. You can't save seed from every vegetable and expect to grow a good crop. You see the uh, tomatoes, for example, in the grocery store. Uh, those are usually hybrid tomatoes, and they've been developed, you know, to have good disease resistant and a good shape, good size, good color, all that stuff. And what they do is they breed several different types together in order to get all of those attributes for a good fruit. The problem is when you take the seeds from that tomato and then you replant it, you don't get the same tomato. You get some offshoot of, you know, some oddball thing. Uh, it, you know, it just doesn't work well. So you want to get, when you're buying seeds, you want to buy something that is not a hybrid. There's plenty of stuff out there to choose from, but especially if you're going to save those seeds. If you want it's a one-use tomato and you want to buy a hybrid, go ahead. But um, the main reason they developed hybrids is because the uh, the soil conditions were so poor, and rather than address that, they just kept dumping chemical fertilizers back in the soil to make the plant grow. Well, the plant wasn't getting everything it needed, so they had to start marrying two types together in order to get what you need. If you keep your soil right without the chemicals, you can grow good fruit without going with a hybrid. So that's the way to go. Basically, that's organic. And a lot of people cringe when they hear that word, but guess what? It works. It's worked for millions of years, and it'll continue to work. So anyway, that's how we save seed. So, oil. Use motor oil. Um, every time I change the oil in the snowblower, the lawnmower, I always make sure I save it. Um, the old oil. I can't really use it, but uh, up here, the stores that sell it are required to take it back as long as you have it in the original container. So I save the containers, <clears throat> fill it up, once I, I drain it into a pan, and then uh, later I have to put it into these jugs. Is it messy? Yeah, it's a messy process, but you can't dump it down the drain. You shouldn't dump it out on the lawn, in the woods. You know, some people just drain it off. You can't do that. Um, that's that's old school, you know. We don't do that anymore. Um, so <clears throat> I save the jugs, and I get the oil back in. I don't always go frequently, you know, to take it back. So I run the risk of going into the cabinet and picking up a jug of oil and accidentally using it as new oil. 
So I started writing on the jugs, dirty motor oil, but one time I went in there, I was in a hurry, and I didn't notice, and I actually used the dirty motor oil as good motor oil. So I developed this. It's a collar, and it fits over the jug, just like that. Use motor oil. Um, so I took a milk jug, <clears throat> and I cut it out on this black line. That's just roughly drawn. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, cut it out there, and then you cut it right around the edge here so that you have an opening large enough to fit right over the cap. And then you take a Sharpie and label it used oil. I wrote discard only. Um, and then that's how I save them until they get ready to go. When I take them to the store, I save this. I put them in a bag. I double bagged it. These will go to the store tonight and they'll recycle them. And that's simply how you do it. Uh, you don't want to be throwing it outside. Uh, you got to save the environment. We have to do it. Once you throw it out there, it's out there forever. So that's how you do oil. So now we're going to work on the ash bucket. Um, I got this at Tractor Supply. I can't remember if this was like uh, seven gallons, eight gallons. Something. Either way, it doesn't really matter. It's got a, a tight fitting lid. And I, I use it to store my ash. You can see there's a little bit left in there from last year. Uh, I'm going to take it out into the garden and I'm going to bury it about this deep. So this sticks up, you know, above the soil. And the reason I bury it is so that in the, in the winter wind and stuff, it doesn't blow around. It'll actually freeze right in that hole. And then I can go out and just pull the lid off and I can dump my ash. Now this is the ash I got from uh, yesterday when I cleaned the stove. So I'm just going to dump that in there. Now this isn't hot, so I don't have to worry about it, but um, I just don't want to blow it all around right now. So there's my ash. And I put my lid on. And that locks it. Now in the fall, when it's really windy out there, and I have, if I have hot ash in there, it's not going to blow around the neighborhood, you know, start everything on fire. So, as I said yesterday, um, every year on the news, you hear about somebody in New England losing a house because someone dumped hot ashes and it blew around and it usually blows to the neighbor's house. So, some poor soul loses their home because someone can't follow simple directions. So, this is why we bury our, our ash. After this gets full, and it does in the winter, after it sits here for a couple days, the embers are out. You don't have to worry about it. And then if I have a snow cover, I can take my, take my shovel and I take another bucket out with me. And I move it to that bucket and then I can spread it around on soil that is highly acidic. Uh, such as like if there's moss or stuff underneath pine trees and stuff like that. And we have acid soil here in New England and this counteracts that. And you'll know you've done it, done the job once you start seeing grass growing, you know. So if you ever under, didn't understand what acidic soil is, look under a pine tree and ask yourself why isn't the grass growing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to head out to the garden and take care of that now. Okay. I've got my ash bucket buried uh, in this bed, and it'll stay here until spring when we're done burning. Um, <clears throat> it'll be safe here, I won't blow around, and that's about it. And just to look around, you can see how the garden is dying off. I've got a few tomatoes i got to pick, clean out those beds. Peppers are hanging in there, but... Uh, we're hoping for a little bit more out of them. 
the basil is done. Um, over here we've got sunflowers growing. There's some eggplant hanging around there. Um, that's where all the dill was. Those beds are all cleaned out now. We have to add dirt every year. It, the um, compost keeps breaking down and breaking down. So we keep adding more and more to it um, to fluff them up. So I'll probably put about two or three inches in each of those beds next spring. Because uh, we'll lose some in the winter too. Um, I don't know what to say about that. It's, these are Brussels sprouts and they're not sprouting. They're brussling, but they're not sprouting. So. This is where the firewood goes, right in, in here. Uh, I have to remove all this stuff to make room, obviously, to put it in. And I have to take out these shelves. So that's what we're going to do right now. Now I have to pull this out. these handles and we can move it
I'd like to stick this in the shed in the summer, but there just isn't room out there. And then, let's see, I'm missing a part here. There's a washer that goes down there. I can, apparently, I didn't put it back in. Uh, all right, so this is ready. Now, I have to store this for the winter. So what I do, is I screw it to the wall. And that's how it goes. Uh, now that will just be filled with firewood and floor to ceiling stuffed right in there. Uh, in addition to that, I'll have a, a barrel of kindling out here. Okay, so this is how the setup goes. Um, the snow blower goes here. It's positioned in the middle of where the two cars go, so it doesn't hamper them coming in and parking. This will be where the firewood goes. That's the container I use to haul the stuff into the house. So that pile of wood, once it's in there, will allow me to go weeks without going out back. But what I try to do is watch the weather and pick a good day to refill it. And I don't like to get it lower than half before I go back out. But it, you know, it usually works out pretty well. You know, there's some nice days in the winter and you can get outside. So it only takes a few minutes to fill it up. And that's it. So today it's a wrap. That's all we're doing for fall. Uh, we've got to pull together another list of stuff and then um, <clears throat> see what happens. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs>